The current boss of the Lucchese crime family in New York City is a guy called Little Vic Amuso. Since the death of Carmine Persico in 2019, Little Vic has been the longest reigning Cosa Nostra boss in America. The guy has been going strong for over 36 years, and that's saying something considering his time in power has been filled with paranoia and bloodlust. I mean, this guy has had a wild ride. He's been involved in a civil war within the Colombo family. He was involved in trying to whack John Gotti and has a massive rap sheet of murder at one time planning to whack over 49 guys at once. In this video, I want to recap little Vic Amuso's rise to power and his current situation in the Italian mob in 2023. Born in Brooklyn in 1934, like many Italian-American kids growing up in the streets of New York, Vittorio quickly got involved in street crime. He entered into the big leagues in the late 1940s when he was introduced to Anthony Corallo, commonly known as Tony Ducks, a future boss of the Lucchese crime family. You see, although Amuso is now the boss of the Lucchese family, Amuso started off as a Colombo guy known at the time as the Profaci family. This along with being directly under Crazy Joe, got him heavily involved in the internal infighting going on at the time in the family. Amuso himself was alleged to have killed numerous Profaci guys throughout the war, however was locked up in the late 1960s on extortion charges. After being released in 1971, Little Vic was thrown right back into the chaos, but later that year, the current boss of the family, Joe Colombo, was famously shot in front of 50,000 people while giving a speech for his Italian-American Civil Rights League. This shook the underworld. And a few months later, Joe Gallo himself was killed while in Little Italy, celebrating his 43rd birthday. With all of this turmoil unraveling, multiple members of the now Colombo family started to jump ship to other families who weren't caught up in killing each other. Among these were Vic Amuso, who defected to the Lucchese family under a guy named Christy Tick Fernari, who was a high-ranking capo in the family, along with another associate in the crew, Anthony Gaspipe Casso, Amuso became a rising protege in the Fernari crew. Gaspipe would end up being a notorious government informant, but we'll get to that later. One of the schemes he worked in involved selling prison paroles to inmates for as much as twenty thousand dollars apiece. He did this through a city corrections officer who was also a Lucchese associate and acted as a middleman between the Lucchese guys and the inmates. With him rising in the family, he eventually earned his button, becoming a maid guy in 1977. The same year, however, he got pinched along with Gaspipe for their involvement in a heroin trafficking ring they had been running from Thailand. Amuso himself was carrying three pounds of H at the time of his arrest. Anyways, three years later in 1980, his capo Funari was promoted to consigliere of the family, leaving Amuso to succeed him as capo of the crew. This was a quick rise in the ranks, going from a maid guy to a captain in just three years. In 1986, he became involved in a scheme to murder John Gotti, who was the boss of the Gambino family. The hit was ordered by Genovese boss Chin Giganti, which was contracted out to the Lucases. On April 13, 1986, a bomb was planted under the car of Gotti's underboss. Frankie DeChico, outside of a social club of a high-ranking Gambino member who was also in on the Gotti hit. A few hundred yards away from the club was Amuso in a car, waiting for the wave from a signalman closer to the club to set off the bomb. Gotti was meant to visit this social club and then him and DeChico would take his car and head to Manhattan. What the hit crew didn't know was that Gotti had sent word earlier that morning that he wanted his crew to meet him in Little Italy in Manhattan instead of him visiting the club. While at the social club, some made guy allegedly asked DeChico for a business card to some lawyer, and Sammy Gravano offered to fetch it from DeChico's car, but DeChico insisted he would go get it. He left a club with another man around Gotti's height and build, and when DeChico entered the car, the signalman believed he saw DeChico and Gotti and waved the signal to Amuso's position. Fucking Buick. The explosion sent shards of glass and metal into the sky as the Gambino crew rushed outside. The man who left the club with DeChico was a Lucchese guy, and even he flew back eight or nine feet from the explosion. DeChico was dead, and Gotti was still alive. The hit had failed. All right, let's get to how Little Vic became boss of the Lucchese family. 
It all started with the famous commission trial in 1985, which saw most of the highest ranking members of Cosa Nostra sent away for life. This was headed by Rudy Giuliani, and the case was actually in part built upon the information laid out in former mob boss Joseph Bonanno's autobiography, A Man of Honor. Rudy Giuliani admitted that Joe Bonanno's book basically gave him the blueprints to the commission case. And then I read Joe Bonanno's book, which is an extremely arrogant book. But in it, he did a complete outline of when the commission began back in the late 20s or 30s. Who ran it then? And the minute I saw that, I said, thank you, Joe. You just gave me half of a Rico case. <laughs> Jesus Christ, to get back on topic, Tony Ducks, along with his underboss, were indicted in the commission case. Initially, Tony Ducks appointed Tony Luongo as acting boss in 1986, however, he was murdered later that year. It was suspected that Amuso and Gaspipe were behind this, as Amuso was Luongo's personal bodyguard, and Luongo was a barrier between Amuso and power. To avoid further infighting and turmoil, Tony Ducks summoned both Gaspipe and Amuso to their former Capo Furnari's house. There he sat both of them down and told them to decide which one of them would become the boss if he were convicted in the commission case. The two decided Amuso would take the helm, and on January 13, 1987, Little Vic Amuso was declared the official boss of the Lucchese family following Tony Ducks being sentenced to life in prison. Amuso's reign as boss is an eventful one. He's renowned for his ruthlessness and paranoia. That's not to say he didn't make the family money, though. I mean, the guy made money. All the way up until 1990, all the families in New York rigged bids for around 75% of $191 million worth of window contracts. Yeah, window contracts, with union payoffs of between $1 to $2 per window installed. The total take of the rigging totaled about $142 million among the five families, including the Lou Casey's. Although the family earned during this period, its numbers were also cut in half. I'm not bullshitting around either, I mean it was literally cut in half. Let me explain. The recurring scenario is one where Amuso gets paranoid that someone is either conspiring against him or turning informant, then he orders them whacked, the job fails, and then the guy actually turns informant. The first instance of this is in the late 80s, where both Amuso and his new underboss Gaspipe were disputing with their crew in New Jersey. The boss in New Jersey was named Tony Tumac Axaturo, and the feud was over how much the Jersey crew should have to kick up to New York. It was currently 50 G's a year, but Amuso wanted half of the entire earnings. He was one greedy prick at times. After continued dispute, Amuso stripped Axaturo of his rank and then summoned the entire Jersey crew to Brooklyn for a meeting. Ten wise guys from Jersey arrive in Brooklyn and then quickly and abruptly left out of fear for their lives. They thought they were getting set up to be killed. This infuriated Amuso, who then sent out the famous Whack Jersey order, which was to murder every single guy in the New Jersey crew. Naturally, the Jersey crew went into hiding, however, over the next 12 months, slowly members started coming back, but were told that Axaturo was to be murdered. A couple years before that, a Lucasi capo fat Pete Chiodo was indicted with a Rico case, and Amuso suspected that he had turned informant. Soon after the indictment, Chiodo was ordered killed, and three gunmen were sent to kill him. Fat Pete took 12 bullets during the hit, yet somehow, by the grace of God, survived. Paranoid and angered by this, Amuso responded by sending out the word that Fat Pete's wife was to be killed. Now this was a big deal, as it was an unspoken rule in the mob that women don't get hurt, but here Amuso was ordering to whack out this capo's wife. Although his wife survived, Amuso had Pete's sister killed, which made him turn informant. He gave up everyone giving the entire structure and details of the Windows case operation, as well as murder, conspiracy, extortion, and other crimes. It seemed Amusa was done for. He had been indicted with 54 charges prior to this Fat Pete thing, and was currently on trial when Fat Pete turned. It didn't seem like things could get worse, but Amuso's paranoia continued. In total, it was allegedly that while on trial he had crafted a list of 49 guys he wanted killed, half of them being Lucchesi members. He even ordered to killing of the acting boss he appointed while he stayed in prison, Little Al Darko. He thought Little Al was responsible for the botched Fat Pete hit, and so he ordered a hit on him. Little Al was on his way to a meeting in Manhattan where numerous top Lucchesi leaders were meant to have a sit-down. Upon arriving, Al noticed a man carrying a gun under his shirt. 
This man is now the current acting boss of the Lou Casey family, by the way, but we'll talk about that later. The man walked into the bathroom and came out without the gun in his shirt. Noticing this, Darko figured the next guy to come out the bathroom was going to start blasting him, so he got the hell out of there. He quickly turned informant and testified against Amuso, bringing in a full conviction of all 54 charges. On June 15, 1991, Little Vic Amuso was sentenced to life imprisonment, and to this day he is still locked up in North Carolina. While in prison he has had the same cycle repeat as when he was a free man, only he is calling the shots from a cell. A couple years into his prison sentence he became paranoid with his longtime friend Anthony Gaspipe Casso and demoted him from underboss. He also sent out an order that no one in the family were to deal with gas pipe. When he was arrested in 1993, he turned informant and was notoriously one of the highest ranking mob guys to ever turn informant. He testified that while on trial for the Windows case with Amuso, the two of them ordered the murder of 12 guys and they used corrupt NYPD cops to carry out the hits. Yeah, they had cops on the payroll as hitmen. For the rest of the 90s and into the 2000s, he tried to control internal rivalries in the family and also turned a couple more guys informants, including his acting boss Joe DeFeed during the 90s. The mafia historian Sally Juan Robb, who wrote the famous book Five Families, states that Amuso was directly involved with the loss of more than half of the Lucchese family's made man, either from murder, being imprisoned, or turning informant. Despite this, Somehow the guy is still alive and still the official boss of the Lou Casey family. He appointed Michael Big Mike DeSantis as acting boss in 2019, but who knows if he won't get paranoid and try to whack out that guy as well. Anyways, that's been the rise and somewhat fall of longtime Lou Casey boss Little Vic Amuso. If you enjoyed, you should like the video and subscribe to the channel to become a friend of ours. That's what non-subscribers could never understand that what the Gangland Gazette does is offer entertainment for people who care about what's going on in organized crime. That's it. That's all it is. We're like the New York Times for wise guys.